Hi everybody. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be taking apart the Lunt uh, telescope, and this is the Lunt 80 millimeter uh, telescope, and it has a pressure tuning system. And as you can see, this focuser here is the Feather Touch focuser, so it's a great focuser for imaging. But I figured I would just break it apart to kind of show you the insides and um, basically, you know, eat your heart out if you don't have something like this. Um, when I was you know, researching telescopes and trying to figure out which one I ultimately want to buy for the long run and invest in. There's not a lot of video content out there. Uh, there is a lot of content on forums which you can read plenty about, like Solar Chat, uh, Stargazers Lounge. Uh, there's another, a couple other forums, but you can basically talk to people online and ask them about the, the, the telescopes they have. You can see the different images they produce with their telescopes, and then of course the technical aspects. But this is a great telescope. It's a pretty large, relatively large aperture for a solar telescope. But I would like to uh, just break it apart and show you the insides. And of course, what you see here with the pressure tune, this is the Edelon. And the beauty about this internal Edelon, and the pressure tuning system, by the way, is excellent. Uh, there are not a lot of sweet spots. It, they're really, this, this tuning system actually, I think, eliminates uh, the Doppler shift. Um, pretty well, meaning that the red and blue shift sides of the solar disk are usually filled up with solar detail. There is a slight difference between one side or the other, and you can't maximize completely the full disk, but for the most part, uh, this pressure training system works excellent. Now the beauty of this internal system, like I was saying, is you can actually take off these collars all the way down to the focuser and attach here, this black collar here, you can detach that and then attach a internal double, double stacking unit. So you can attach a second Edelon so you have two handles. And of course, um, if you don't know anything about that, what that does is reduce your, your bypass, your angstroms. I'm not sorry, not your angstrom, it reduces uh, your bandwidth to 0.5 angstroms. So that just basically gives you a little more detail on the solar disk and you'll have a lot more contrast actually on the solar disk. But I figure why not just break it down for you and the beauty of these scopes are, they have these screws that go on the end of pretty much every collar. And it'll be pretty gentle. The great thing is, this will not void your warranty by doing this because I'm sorry, I'm going to take this away from the camera. Maybe I'll actually set it up like this for you. Let's do it like that. It'll make it easier on me as well. Okay, and you've already noticed I have my Vixen style dovetail. Normally I would have that off, but it's okay. These screws are easily located. So these screws on each collar and there you go. So, now I'll move this out of the way. Here is your collar with your focuser, okay? And you can actually, there are more set screws around this collar, and you can take this collar off and replace it with the internal double stacking unit. Let me show you what the inside of the uh, telescope looks like. So there's that mirror that you see there is the Edelon. I'm hoping you can see this. There you go. Let me see here. Let me get a focus. Yeah. So this pressure tuning system here basically puts space in between the internal mirrors. But you can see how simple that was to take off. And this won't void your warranty because you might have to do this yourself. I won't do it anymore, but you can basically take off, like I said, this collar, because that's where you, where you need to put the double stacking unit. You can take this collar off and you can go all the way down to the focuser. Let's go ahead and reattach this. So put it in. And the engineering 
I mean, just the uh, the way they design these telescopes is really superb. Uh, excellent, actually. And if everything fits together f perfectly. Like the machining is really incredible, and uh, I was always a big Coronado fan. Of course, David Lunt came from there. But the fact that these scopes are the only ones made in America, in Tucson, Arizona, I think warrant respect and your money if you want to buy a solar telescope and you support American manufacturing. Now, nothing against Coronado and Mead, but they did outsource to Mexico which is nothing unusual these days, of course. But David Lunt and his posse over there in uh, Tucson, I think, um, are doing a great thing here. And um, they create, I mean, if you ever get your hands on one of these, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's just excellent equipment. Um, it's just excellent. Now, let me show you the focus here real quick. And um, if you want, to do imaging, and you want to do really good imaging, I would say go ahead and get a straight through blocking filter. Uh, maybe people will disagree with me there, but because um, you can do imaging with a diagonal, but I went ahead and got the, the straight through. Let me show you the straight through filter. So here's the straight through 12 millimeter blocking filter. This is the eyepiece well here, so your camera would sit here. And normally, if you're going to be doing prime focus, you're going to need some kind of extension set up, like so. And I'm using an old Canon um, extender that I would actually hook up via T-thread. But uh, something like this, okay. All right, okay. And so this distance here, and then you just put your camera into the eyepiece well. And adjusting the focuser, that'll give you enough um, back focus to, to achieve focus. Okay, see, something like that. But recently, what I have been doing, because I don't have as much time as I used to, is what you do is, I get rid of the extension tube, and I can actually put the blocking filter straight into the focuser like so. Now the question is, well, how am I going to achieve focus by getting the camera body so close right here? Well, what I'm using is my reducer. This is the Antares 0.5x focal reducer threaded onto the end of my barrel. And whenever you reduce your focal length, so you can maybe fit a full disk image on your camera chip, you obviously need to get the camera chip closer to if you're reducing your focal length, that means the focal point is closer, is shorter, so down here more. So you need to get the chip closer. So this setup right here is basically reducing the focal length of this telescope to about 280 millimeters, when it would normally be at 560 millimeters. But it's a great setup because it's very sturdy. The distance between the end of my focuser and the camera is not much at all, okay? That's not gonna put a lot of strain uh, on my imaging session. It won't put a lot of strain on the equipment. So, that's a good look, I think, at the telescope. And, um, of course, you can use stuff like extenders, like PowerMates and Barlow's. But once you start doing that, you're going to need to put that extension tube back in to be able to gather focus. So you need to reinsert something like this to put a little bit of distance between the blocking filter and the actual focuser. And of course, when you start using an extender like the PowerMate, you're going to even be backed out farther. Okay, and that's going to put a little bit of strain from the focuser here, okay, to the camera body. But, uh, solar imaging is not as big of a deal when it comes to stability because we're gathering a lot of fames very quickly. We're not, you know, taking five, ten minute exposures and, you know, any little bit of movement is not going to cause uh, too many problems. But there's a look at uh, the nice uh, Lunt scope. 
and um, it's a great telescope. I don't know what else to say about it, but I figured I'd just show you what that looks like when you break down that collar off the Edelon. And hopefully one day I'll get the double stacking unit and uh, install that for you. Alright everybody, yeah, take care.